Today's reading on the fourth Sunday in Advent comes from Luke's Gospel, and it is the Annunciation, the appearance of the angel to Mary, and the prediction, the foretelling of the birth of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth, Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a girl promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. The girl's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, I'm a virgin, how can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth? It is said that she cannot have children, but she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. So it's a familiar account. What's really interesting about the, uh, the narrative here, which appears only in Luke's Gospel, is the fact that we're told nothing about Gabriel. And it's interesting to, if I say normalise the situation, that sounds rather strange for somebody to be visited, to have an experience of God, and to then, in this case a woman, become pregnant and give birth to Jesus, God in human form. How can that be in any way normal? But to say that Mary was visited by Gabriel, to me has echoes of everyone, including myself, who has felt God's awesome love and power pour through your life, to have an experience of the living God. It's not tied down to whether you see shining white figures or people with feathers or people with trumpets or people at all. It's about having an experience of God. When Gabriel comes to Mary, he says, peace be with you, which reminds us very much of the upper room appearance of the frightened disciples when Jesus comes and stands amongst them twice and says, peace be with you. Mary had an experience of God. God came to her and gave her that message and gave her that assurance, surely created a real, real, tangible experience of the God who made the universe. And in response to that, well, what could Mary say? What could Thomas say, confronted with the risen Jesus, except my Lord and my God? And what can Mary say? except I am your servant. And this isn't to denigrate Mary in any way, shape or form, but rather to elevate everybody in the world, all God's children. For God loves all people equally. And sometimes, through circumstance or through our own willingness to open ourselves to the cosmic power that is God's love, that is all around us all the time, we get a glimpse of that. And whenever we do, recorded not just in the pages of our Bible, but also in the lives of countless millions of human beings who have lived since Jesus' death and resurrection, they have experienced God in a real way. It's changed them from within. They have, to use the jargon, been born again, changed utterly, convinced and convicted beyond all doubt, that this God who made all things does indeed 
love me. And in the words of the song, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. There can be no other response. There is talk in the commentaries of this passage and of the interpretation of the state of Mary, the translation into the Latin that says, Mary, full of grace, is really interesting. Because within those words, then, is the concept that Mary was in some way specially able to be God's servant, specially equipped to be God's vessel, the host, for the child that was going to be born as Jesus, our Lord, Saviour and King. But that really isn't a true translation of the Greek. To say that Mary herself was full of grace, on the one hand is utterly true, just as I am full of joy because I have met with the Lord, just as Thomas was blown away by the experience of the risen Jesus. We can be in that state, but it doesn't imply anything special about us. It just says that we are incredibly, incredibly fortunate, incredibly blessed, incredibly privileged, and given an incredible responsibility to do something with that love, joy, peace and strength, and that is to do things with it for the benefit of brothers and sisters, wherever they may be and whoever they are, because they all matter too. There is nobody who is more able, more ready, more deserving of God's love than anybody else. We believe in a priesthood of all believers, of a unity that binds humanity together, a world in which <clears throat> pardon me, men and women all matter, boys and girls, people of all ages. We all are God's children and we're all important. Mary was indeed tremendously blessed. She had her part to play, just as in the um, early narrative of Jesus's birth and development, John the Baptist has an important part to play. So Joseph has an important part to play. All the figures around Jesus have an important part to play. And so too do you and I. Bathed in the light of God's love, we too have an important part to play, and that is to receive God's love into our hearts, to make it so very real, to understand, as Mary did at the end of that passage, that we are indeed greatly blessed and in the presence of the God who made all things. And to then turn to that God with love and adoration, receive into our hearts the fullness of that grace which comes to us, unearned and freely given, and then turn to the world and offer the same, which is the ultimate expression of service and love. As we ourselves receive God's love into our hearts, may our call be also, I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said, for the glory of God.